The Jays lay an absolute beatdown against the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park. And of course they set a record for the most home runs the Red Sox have allowed at Fenway Park in ever. Incredible numbers, eight home runs for the Blue Jays. And I'm thinking, look, if they get in on the action, hey, get me going. I'm ready to go here. I want to get in on the action because the fellas were on fire today. They got going early and the bats did not stop. And I will say it time and time again about the Boston Red Sox. They may have the prolific offense and they're a really good offensive ball club, but they can't pitch. I mean, honestly, people are going to say, well, this guy's been good this year. This, but They're trying to bank on Eduardo Rodriguez, Nathan Eovaldi, Garrett Richards, Nick Pavetta, and I was going to say, you know, Martin Perez, but he pretty much looked like Louis Rivera throwing BP today. You're banking on those five guys in your rotation every single night? Those guys are three, four starters at best on a good team. It's not very good. And they're trying just to crush teams. I mean, they're trying to just lay a beat down on every team. And offensively, you can do it, but you run into a good pitcher, a guy who's pitching well, like Robbie Ray, like a Steven Matz. And your offense can't go and get going early. Good luck having your starters go four shutout innings to start because it's not going to happen. Not all the time. It's, it's, it's going to happen at some point in time. But it was awful. And Martin Perez got the start, and he was terrible. The Blue Jays, oh, let's get to the offense because this was some good stuff to talk about. Here we go. Top of the first inning with two on Teoscar Hernandez takes Martin Perez deep to left center and it's way gone. A three-run shot for Teo and yet again, the Blue Jays strike first early on in the first inning. You're up 3 nothing in the first. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. comes up and gets a pitch in the inner half, and you know Gurriel is going well when he's able to keep that ball fair. As he pulls it, I mean, I thought it was too inside to even keep fair, somehow gets barreled a ball, and he crushes it over the green monster. It's a 4 0 Jays lead. But we're all sitting here saying, you know, well, yeah, Robbie raised the mound. We feel comfortable with that, but that offense is really good over in Boston. You got to find a way to get some more runs because the bullpen is bad. It is bad. Okay? But, and in the top half of the second inning, Marcus Simmons like, you asked for more, I give you more, as he crushes a solo shot to dead center field. And in the first two innings, the Blue Jays have three home runs, and it's a 5 nothing game. All right, bottom of the second inning, Xander Bogart, so solo shot, uh, who cares? It's 5-1. And the great thing about that, Robbie Ray didn't let it bother him. Goes out there, finishes off the inning, no problem. And that's that. A great job for Robbie Ray bouncing back after that home run from Xander Bogarts. But then the Jays at the top of the fourth and they're like, don't worry, Robbie. We got you covered. We'll get you more runs. And with guys in runners in score with, with runners in scoring position, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. punches a ball into left field for a base hit. Jonathan Davis comes in to score. They get that run back. It's now a 6-1 ball game. But we're not satisfied. Or at least Teoscar Hernandez is not satisfied satisfied with one three-run home run. Because here's the second one. He crushed it. It looked like in the same spot for the most part. He crushed. Actually, no, I think this, was, this one was more center field. The other one was more to the left field. Either way, he crushed it. And it was way gone. Vladdy and Bo come in to score, and the Jays are up 9-1. They're feeling great, but they ain't done. Let's keep this thing going. Next inning, because the base is loaded, and Marcus Simeon has a sacrifice fly. Give us some small ball in there as well. you love to see it. It is now a 10-1 Blue Jay lead. And then, and then Bo comes up. is like, I ain't about that small ball life because he crushes a three-run bomb. Again, the third three-run home run of the day. Davis and Kevin Biggio come in to score on the Bo Bichette bomb. And it is now 13-1 Blue Jays. Holy smokes. You know, and then, and then yeah, bottom of the fifth inning, Kike Hernandez, it's an RBI double, two run score. Ah, who cares? 13 3. Well, maybe we need to add some more offense in there, huh? Top of the sixth inning, Kevin Biggio comes up, and just like yesterday, taking a ball the other way, and it's in the Green Monster seats. A dinger for Biggio, back to back days with a dinger for Kevin Biggio. The Jays add one run right back. It's now a 14 3 game. But they ain't done just yet. 
Top of the seventh inning, Vladdy comes up, and it would not be a home run derby without Vladimir Guerrero Jr. at the dish. And he crushes one to right center field, and I'm going to sound like, uh, is it Chris Berman? Berman. The guy did the all-star, the, the, the home run derby, back, 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 back. That's what it felt like every day. That's what it felt like all day long, right? Someone hits it and goes, oh, that's a deep one. Back, 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 back. That's gone. Because Vladdy hits his 21st home run of the year, leading the big leagues. Bo comes in to score in the play, and the Jays just keep tacking on. It is now, what am I at now, 16? I think it's 16 to, to, to 3. I ain't getting six. I'm so I'm baffled that I'm actually still intact here with the score. And then Bobby Dalbeck gets a solo shot off of Trent Thorne to make it a you know a 16-4 game. Oh, the comeback's on. And then uh, and then in the top of the ninth inning, to, it was off a player. It was off a position player. But who cares? Because it looks nice in the stats. Rowdy Teles comes in to pinch hit and he crushes a two-run bomb. Bo comes in again and the Jays lead. 18 to 4. Holy smoke. Look, I like I talk about the Red Sox pitching staff not being good, but today was just another level of nonsense. Eight home runs. 18 runs scored, over 20 hits in the game. I mean incredible for the Toronto Blue Jays. And you want to hear these stats cuz boy they juicy. Here we go. Marcus Simeon, 2 for 4 in the game with two runs scored, two RBIs. And the home run. But these, these next three guys have the real juicy numbers. Listen to this one. Bo Bichette, four for five in the game. He had three RBIs, a home run, walked once, and he scored five times. The guy got every time Bo Bichette got on base today, he came in to score. That is why he is the number two hitter. Because he's a doubles guy. Yeah, he hit a three-run bomb today, but he will get on base a ton. And when you have guys like Vladdy and Teo and George Springer or Simeon or whoever they end up moving around when Springer comes back, behind those guys, and even Gurriel for that matter, I mean, my God, Bo Bichette's going to come home almost, almost every damn time he comes to the plate. It's, it's pretty, you know, it gets on base. And Vladdy went three for five in the game today and somehow raised his batting average, somehow raised his, his on-base percentage to like 450. It's just, it's not fair at this point. Three for five, scored two runs, three RBIs, and a home run for Vladdy. He had the, he had the opposite field two-run shot, and he pulled an RBI single. Beautiful. It's magic. I'd love to see it. I think it was a two-out single as well. And then Teoscar Hernandez... Three for it gets lost, right? The two three run shots get lost because of all the nonsense you saw afterwards. And then Vladdy putting his mark on the game is all like Tail did great, but Vladdy. Insane. Right? Tail goes three for six in the game, scores a couple runs, obviously, on his two home runs, and has six RBIs on the two three run shots. Have a day, Tail. He's had over 40 RBIs in the year. The Blue Jays offense just feeling real nice right now. And let's keep going. Because Lourdes Gurriel Jr. is starting to feel it. He's starting to feel it at the plate, and you can see it. That home run was evident of that, in my opinion. The fact that he was able to get to that inside pitch and drill it out of the ballpark tells me he's feeling good. Three for five for him. Scored a couple runs. An RBI and a home run for him. And then, we talked about it in the last video. How Kevin Biggio has been back for two games. He had a hit in his first game back. I think he had two or three hits yesterday. And he went two for four today, scored a couple runs, had the RBI on the home run, two home runs in two days for Kevin Biccio, and he walked once. Now that's, pro mm, now that is production out of your number eight hitter, eight or seven, I think it was eight today. Fantastic for Kevin Biccio, I oh, know he was seven, because then it was Riley Adams and then Davis. He was batting seventh today, but what a job for Kevin Biccio, what a job by the Toronto Blue Jays, I mean. We've, we talked about it in Game 1 of the series, how literally nothing went right in Game 1. With runners in square position, you couldn't do squat, and, and you couldn't, your starting pitcher did great, but your bullpen was terrible, the errors was abysmal. And then you bounced back with a really good game yesterday, and then an 18-4 whopping today. That is the great thing about baseball. You can just flip a switch and you're feeling good again. That's the great thing about it. And if you have a short memory, you can turn, th you can turn things around quick. Now, with all the runs that happen. Robbie Ray Stark gets uh, overlooked, and he was great. Look, he had six innings, four hits, three runs, walked three. You know, the numbers maybe don't suggest that he did fantastic, but you got to realize, 
when he allowed those two of the three runs, the game was over. Like, it was like a 9-10-1 game at that point. So, yeah, they scored a couple of garbage runs, but it didn't mean anything. When the game was meaningful, he was awesome. Six innings, four hits, three runs, ten strikeouts. Another double, back-to-back -back double strikeout game for, for Robbie Ray and just the, the resurgence of, of Robbie Ray's continuing. And I think I'm getting to the point where I'm just expecting it now. I mean, it's crazy to think that after what, we, what, what his numbers looked like last year and the season that he had last year, but he's done it enough against really good teams this year to, to, to prove to me that this is him. It's fantastic to watch. He's, he's dealing. Now, the bullpen. Okay, it was very interesting to see how they were going to work this. Trent Thornton went two innings, allowed two hits, one run was the solo bomb, and had a couple strikeouts. So other than the solo bomb to Dalbeck to straightaway center, he was fine. So I, And then, I, look, at this point, I was like, okay, do you throw out Piams? Or you literally just got Beasley because Steven Matz hit the COVID IL because he had an inconclusive test. But, you know, Jays fans, don't freak out about that. It's not an actual IL stint where he has the last 10 days or whatever. If he tests negative tomorrow or tonight, he's, be he's back with the team tomorrow. Like, it's just, it's that. So it's not a big deal there. But they bring in Beasley. I'm like, look, you just brought this guy back. He could be gone tomorrow. It's 18-4. Use him. And they did. Went an inning, one walk, closed out the ball game. No runs for him. Good job for Beasley getting out there and finishing off the ball game. As the Jays win 18 4. I mean, insane. Don't expect this every game, Blue Jay fans, but this kind of shows you the, the lineup construction, how, how, how deep this lineup can really be. Because you had one, two, three, four, five, six guys who had multi hit games today. You had eight home runs. I'm not saying it's going to happen every game, but it's the possibility, the capability of this lineup is so dangerous without George Springer. And that, that part just baffles me in, in itself. Now, what is really interesting is the game tomorrow because I want that win more than anything. You win that series, you would have won three or four against the Red Sox in Boston. You would have gained a couple games. And, and just like that, you're only, what, three and a half back of the Sox for second in the AL East? I mean, you've already, you're already a game above the Yankees because they lost today. They got smoked today uh, by the uh, Philadelphia Phillies. They've lost three straight. They're three and seven in their last time. They're only a game over 500. They are really struggling are the Yankees. And the Blue Jays, if they can put a nice little stretch together, get some space in between these teams, I don't know. But either way, Alec Manoa gets the ball for the Blue Jays in tomorrow. This guy is literally getting thrown right into the fire against big-time offenses. You know, he faced uh, the Houston Astros. He faced, uh, oh gosh, the White Sox, you know, and then he faces the Boston Red Sox, some of the most prolific offenses in baseball. He did great against the White Sox, was fantastic against the Houston Astros in his, in his big league debut. Now he's got Boston at Fenway. It's going to be crazy. 7-10 first pitch tomorrow versus Nathan Eovaldi uh, in the finale of the four-game set against the Red Sox. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed this game there this afternoon because, damn, that was beautiful. Smack the like button. Do appreciate that. You guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the game. What you like, what you not like from today's ball game for the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't know what you can't like from a game like this. Some people might find a way to find something they don't like. That's fine. But let me know what you liked about the game because there was a ton. All right? Comment. Uh, good, uh, Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up. Send me a damn like great stuff. The Instagram link is down below. So follow up there if you have not done so already, guys. And I will talk to you, Jay's Edition, in the finale tomorrow night. 7-10 first pitch at Fenway. Alec Manoa. Nathan Eovald in the pitching matchup as the Jays are for the Series W. Right? So thank you so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.